The cupboard under your sink is packed with products because the cleaning industry knows you don't understand pH. That ignorance is costing you a lot of money buying endless products you don't need and ruining the very things you're cleaning in the process. In the next minute alone, 2 million people will start a cleaning task and 99% of those people don't understand the pH scale. That's over 3 billion cleaning tasks performed every single day. Using any cleaning product without knowing its pH is like playing darts with a blindfold on. Sometimes you'll hit a bullseye, most of the time it's a guess. You spend hundreds of euros on cleaning products and most of them are a waste of money because nobody ever taught you about pH. You see different pHs will clean different types of soil. Not only that though, different pHs will also damage different types of materials. Understanding the material that you're trying to clean and the type of dirt that you're dealing with will help you pick the right cleaning product with the right pH to get the results you want without damaging the material that you're cleaning. It's important to understand that absolutely everything has a pH value. The scale is numbered 1 to 14 with numbers 0 to 6 being acidic, numbers 8 to 14 being alkaline or basic and 7 being neutral. This floor was cleaned with a pH 13 detergent. High pH or high alkaline cleaning products are amazing at cleaning something like this filthy floor and they're not going to damage it in the process. By contrast this beautiful marble shower surround has been permanently damaged by a very low pH toilet bowl cleaner sitting at pH 2 and containing hydrochloric acid. And don't even think about mixing these two because if you do you're going to create toxic chlorine gas. At the far end of the pH scale, roughly around pH 13, we've got a 100% wool rug that's been chemically burnt. Now this is an Iranian rug worth about 20 grand, a dog peed in it and the owner tried to clean it with an oxidizing carpet cleaner, one that's designed for plastic carpets which aren't nearly as sensitive as wool. The key thing to know about the pH scale is that it's logarithmic, not linear. That means each step up or down multiplies the strength by 10. pH 7 to pH 8, 10 times stronger. pH 7 to pH 9, 100 times stronger. 7 to 10, 1000 times stronger. And all the way up to pH 14, which is 10 million times stronger than pH 7. So please don't be fooled by how close the numbers look. The jump from pH 11 to pH 13 is absolutely massive. I've even chemically burnt my own skin with a pH 13 product. Not understanding this can not only wreck what you're trying to clean, it can also injure you or others. So cleaners fall into three main categories then, neutral, acidic or alkaline. Neutral cleaners sit between pH 6 and 8. They're perfect for daily surface cleaning or for delicate materials like wool, silk and cotton. You'll also see neutral floor cleaners a lot. They won't damage finishes or materials like the marble we saw earlier that got etched by the acid. Plus, they're gentler and safer, so if curious kids or pets get their hands or paws on them, the risk is much lower. Acidic cleaners have a pH below 6 and are mainly for inorganic mineral-based soils. That's why you'll spot them mostly in bathrooms. They're great for toilet bowls, soap scum, lime scale and even degreasing in some cases. In upholstery and carpet cleaning, and for cleaning some fabrics, acidic cleaners can be very useful for removing rust stains and tannic soils such as tea, coffee and red wine. And because of the iron content, acidic cleaners can also be useful for the removal of blood stains. Particularly when cleaning fabrics and carpets, neutralizing a high alkaline cleaner with an acid rinse to return the material to neutral is industry best practice. Alkaline cleaning products are cleaning products with a pH above 8 and are the most common types of cleaning products available. General purpose cleaners generally have a pH between 9 and 11 and can be used to remove oils, particulate soiling, fats, sugars, organic soils and proteins, and that's why we know these as general purpose cleaners. Laundry detergents, baking soda, washing soda, and numerous other alkaline cleaning products that you pick up in the supermarkets are all examples of these. Heavy duty cleaners and degreasers usually have a pH of 13 to 14 and can be used to remove heavy grease, unblock drains, clean ovens, so carbon and soot, remove oil, and various other cleaning tasks that require a high level of causticity. Side note, it took me about five goes to get that word right. Caustic soda, caustic soda? Mm. <clears throat> caustic soda and ammonia are good examples of high pH degreasers and cleaners. And these high pH products are also those most likely to cause damage to items you're trying to clean 
or cause injury to the user or anybody accidentally introduced to the chemistry. And be really careful with this because I've seen very bad chemical burns from oven cleaners, caustic soda, or any other high pH cleaning product. High pH products are extremely corrosive and can inflict really serious damage and burns. So be careful and take the necessary precautions whilst using them. Most organic dirt and soiling like sugars, fats, and proteins are acidic. So it makes sense that to clean with traditional detergents, we need an alkaline cleaning chemical. But because acids and alkalines neutralize each other, as soon as the cleaning product hits the dirt, it's neutralized, so not all of it is broken down by our cleaning agent. The two sides of the pH scale then can be likened to rows of soldiers neutralizing each other as they make contact. This is why sometimes buffering chemicals are added. A buffer is designed to maintain a detergent's pH, therefore giving it sustained performance. This is great news for cleaning, not so great for sensitive fibres and dyes. Natural fibres are particularly sensitive to dye bleed and chemical burning caused by high pH cleaning. This is what dye bleed looks like in the fibres of a wool rug in an 18th century house in Ireland. A burst pipe cascaded water through the 200 year old lime washed walls which turned the flood water to about pH 11.5. This caused the dyes to bleed in the rug and it took us 70 hours of painstaking work to fix it. This viscose and cotton sweet was also cleaned by using a high alkaline spot and stain remover that's readily available in the supermarket. This really should have been avoided and we were only able to reduce this mark by about 50%. Now, this particular sofa was about 15,000 euros. So it was really, really disappointing to have to tell the client that we couldn't actually remove the damage and that it could have been avoided in the first place by using the right pH level cleaning product for the task. Now it's not all doom and gloom as this enthusiastic and slightly unsettling lady is demonstrating. A basic understanding, and yes the pun is absolutely intended, of acids and bases is really useful for cleaning tasks. Here for example I'm using a high pH pre-spray to clean 2000 seats in a concert arena in Dublin. I'm utilizing the high pH cleaning product to break down sugars, proteins, and fats from the food and drink that is spilled on the seats during events. I'm then rinsing the seats with acidified water to leave the upholstery in a pH neutral state so that it doesn't cause any irritation to concert goers when they sit on the seats later on. I've even made my own cleaning products that are not only eco-friendly, they're insanely cheap. They're so effective, I've thrown out all of this stuff from under my kitchen sink. Cleaning products are designed to confuse you. Aisles full of bottles, all promising miracles, but most of them are just the same chemistry in different packaging. My job, as far as I see it, is to cut through that noise and show you what actually matters. Sorry, I have to interrupt this. I'm just sitting here pissing myself laughing at the women in this B-roll. Who on earth decided to get a load of women and dress them up as weird 1950s housewives with curlers in their hair holding buckets of cleaning product? Sorry. Back to the video. That's why I'm making a whole series, how bleach works, how peroxides work, enzymes, washing powders, dish soap, vinegar, everything broken down so you know exactly what you really need in your home. Hit subscribe so you don't miss them and I'll put the next video in the sequence right here on the screen.